Sayın konuklarımız, sevgili izleyicilerimiz, Festo'nun sponsorluğunda gerçekleştirilecek olan The Impact of Digitalization in the Interlogistic Machinery konulu panelimize hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Paneli yönetmek üzere Festo Türkiye Satış Müdürü Sayın Tolga Kutlu'yu davet ediyorum. Evet. Yani. Ufak bir teşekkür ederim. Ufak bir teknik aksaklıkla başladık. Kusura bakmayın. Ee, öncelikle tüm katılımcılara hoş geldiniz demek istiyorum. Ee, bugünkü konferansımızın konusu intralojistik sektöründe dijitalleşmenin etkilerini konuşacağız. Ee, ben Tolga Kutlu. E, Festo Sanayi ve Ticaret AŞ şirketinde satış müdürü olarak görev yapıyorum. E, konu Bay Mino Lopez Junior. E, Festo Almanya merkezde OEM müşterilerden sorumlu e, key account manager olarak görev yapıyor. Bu konferansı ikimiz e, sürdüreceğiz. E, Mino, dear Mr. Lopez, are you with us? Yes, I can hear you. Do you hear me also? Yes, yes, we can hear you. E, welcome to the conference. Yeah, thank you so much. E, you are joining from Germany. E, Okay, uh, Mino, uh, could you please introduce uh, your company, our company, uh, Festo, and also yourself shortly? Okay, okay. So to do that, uh, I will share my screen. Um, please give me a feedback if you uh, see it. Uh, Mino, actually, I am also sharing screen. The audience oh, okay. can see the presentation. Okay, so I would I would do it then in this way. So, uh, good morning to everybody. Um, actually, I don't speak any word in Turkish, so um, I try to learn, but it is quite difficult for me. So I have to apologize that I, I have to talk in English. But my colleague Toga can help me uh, and help you uh, in case you don't understand what I'm I'm saying if I'm talking too much. Uh, Tauga, please give me a sign and help the colleagues in the audience uh, with uh, eventual questions. So thank you so much once again for the opportunity to present myself uh, and our company, Festo. Festo uh, is a German company, a family-owned company. Uh, this company was founded in 1925. Today, we have more than 20,000 people, uh, employees in the world with more than 300,000 customers worldwide. Actually, Festo uh, was born in the sector of woodworking machinery with uh, tools for the woodworking machinery. And then after some years, uh, Festo has uh, founded very interesting uh, products in the area of pneumatics. And with the pneumatics, Festo uh, got big Uh, grew, uh, very fast in all these years and today we have more than 30,000 catalog products and also hundreds of customized solutions that we offer to our customers in more than 60 companies worldwide. Uh, pneumatics is still our main business but not only this, we are also present in the electrical automation Uh, in the digitalization area, as you will see in some minutes. And we are also present in the didactic business, where we can uh, help uh, universities, schools, laboratories uh, to uh, learn or to give students and uh, employees the opportunity to qualify th themselves in the area of industrial automation. So, um, Yeah, that's it. A short uh, presentation. As for myself, I am uh, responsible uh, for some customers in the intralogistics sector. I work here in the headquarters in Germany. And as mentioned, uh, being uh, I, I, I've been working uh, in the intralogistics sector uh, since some years, and today we will try to show you what Festo is doing that. But first, I think Toga will present some uh, figures about Festo Turkey. 
Yes, correct. Ee, ben de Festo Türkiye ile ilgili olarak kısaca bir bilgilendirme yapayım. Ee, Festo Almanya'nın yüzde yüz kendi sermayesiyle kurmuş olduğu şirketi olarak Festo Sanayi ve Ticaret AŞ 1989 yılında e, Türkiye'de faaliyete geçti. E, şu an itibariyle 150 kişiden e, fazla e, çalışanımız var ve Türkiye genelinde 17 binden fazla müşteriyle e, aktif olarak çalışıyoruz. Festo Türkiye sadece Türkiye'ye e, hizmet etmekle kalmıyor. Aynı zamanda e, Kafkasya'daki Türkiye Cumhuriyetler, İran ve MENA bölgesindeki Kuzey Afrika ve e, Orta Doğu'daki e, diğer ülkelerden de organizasyon olarak sorumlu. E, Diğer taraftan sadece bir satış şirketi olarak faaliyet göstermiyoruz. Aynı zamanda bir tasarım merkeziyiz de. Yaklaşık 2 yıldır 19 mühendisimizin çalıştığı bir tasarım merkeziyiz. Ve diğer taraftan bir de tedarik zincirine dahiliz Festo Global'de. Dünya üzerindeki 3 satın alma merkezinden birisi. Yani sadece ürün ithal edip Türkiye'de satışını gerçekleştirmiyoruz. Aynı zamanda Türkiye'den Almanya'ya e, ham madde ve yarım amül e, ihracatını da e, sağlıyoruz. E, onun dışında Türkiye'de üretim faaliyetlerimiz var. Belli başlı ana ürünlerimizin imalatını Türkiye'de yapabiliyoruz. Stoktan teslim e, ürünler yapıyoruz. Ve didaktik olarak adlandırdığımız e, eğitim danışmanlığı ve e, eğitim ekipmanları satan firmamızla da endüstriyel otomasyon sektörüne e, yine hizmet veriyoruz. Peki e, dear Mino, yes. e, now it is again your turn. What does intralogistics mean for Festo? Okay, okay. so um, if you help me, Toga, just click on the slides. Um, intralogistics for Festo um, is one of our uh, new uh, focus industrial sectors in which we are focusing. Um, Interlogistics means for us everything that has to do with optimizing, integrating, automating, and managing logistical uh, flow of material goods. Um, because of the uh, very uh, strong increase of the volume related to the e-commerce worldwide, um, customers or machine builders and end customers uh, warehouses and every kind of business, uh, these companies are investing uh, very strong in the automation of these material flows uh, to attend and serve this higher demand uh, caused by the e-commerce. And that leads to a higher investment from machine builders and then to end -end customers uh, in this area. So here uh, are some pictures uh, at the left side, uh, you see some pictures of typical applications or typical machine types at the end user or at the machine builder side. Like, for example, conveyor systems, sorting equipment, elevators, descenders, the AGVs, the automated guided vehicles that transport uh, pieces, products, and packages from A to B uh, automatically. And also the robots are playing a very important role in this machinery sector. At the right side, uh, you see some pictures from uh, end users that we also serve in this uh, industrial sector, like, for example, big wholesale and retail uh, um, suppliers um, or players like Amazon is uh, maybe the most famous ex example uh, we can do or in Asia, uh, Alibaba, or, or even uh, postal services or couriers like uh, USP, DHL, uh, FedEx, and so on, or even local uh, postal uh, national services, airports with the transportation of baggages uh, and luggages, uh, and the typical industries in the automotive area and also in the food and beverage area, uh, they use also uh, very strong uh, intralogistics machinery to transport their, their goods. The only thing in the intralogistics that Festo uh, is not participating in 
is uh, the aspect related to the administration software of the big warehouses uh, or retail shops. So this software business is not part of our uh, offer. Okay, Mino. Thank you for the information. Uh, my next question is, what are the trends in interlogistics sector and what are the impacts of digitalization in interlogistics? Okay, so this slide has, uh, has uh, a too long test. I just click once again to show you some uh, important uh, words here. So, uh, first of all here, uh, you see the number one, intralogistics 4.0. What is this? There is the need not only to automate even more intralogistics machinery, but to digitalize processes. It means that everything is getting digitalized also in the supply chain and intralogistics business. It means what is the digitalization here? What can, can we do with digitalization? I give you just a simple um, uh, example. Uh, using digitalized uh, tools, you can, as machine builder, for example, make a digital twin of your machine and offer the, this to your final customer so that he can operate and show eventual uh, pages and problems in the machine uh, digitally in the screen, even before this problem will occur. So, and then I make the link with the uh, second uh, word here, AI. AI stays for artificial intelligence. So, with uh, softwares and uh, artificial, uh, artificial intelligence modules, you can uh, identify um, future problems and change, for example, a component in your machine, uh, start a maintenance task, before this com component will, will, will have uh, some problems. You can anticipate uh, eventual uh, stops in, in the production. And this is also an aspect that machine builders can offer to end customers in terms of efficiency or making intralogistics machinery more efficient. The third aspect, aspect are the so-called autonomous mobile robots or AGVs, autom automated guided vehicles. I already mentioned at the beginning, these are um, automated vehicles that take a good a product from point A and transport this product or this good to a point B without having the interaction with a human being. So it's an automated vehicle that uh, can have also automation functions on it, in order to manipulate and transport products. That's also a big trend, one of the biggest or um, uh, um, strongest growing subsectors in the intralogistics uh, uh, area. The fourth um, word here is Asia. And here um, I make a parenthesis to, to illustrate the importance of Turkey. Uh, the, the geographically importance of Turkey here. So, your country, Turkey, is uh, geographically big, has big uh, potentials in terms of uh, intralogistics, but it stays between Europe and Asia. In Asia, uh, is the biggest market for intralogistics machinery. So, you have uh, a, a, a privileged uh, location, a privileged situation in this market because you can make the bridge uh, between Europe, where uh, very uh, many machine builders are, and uh, Asia, where the biggest uh, consumption market is. And Turkey itself is also a very, very interesting market for machine builders and end users in the logistics sector. So, uh, the importance of Asia, Asia is the biggest and most important region, including Turkey. And once again, uh, you are in a privileged uh, situation in this market. And the, uh, the, the, the, the fifth aspect are re is related to the robots and the vision systems that are being also um, strongly used in the intralogistics sector in order uh, to make machines more efficient and more autonomous. So, is, is the answer okay? Uh, yes, yes. Thank you for the summary. 
Uh, and my next question is, um, you know, what are the main applications in interlogistics in terms of, of digitalization and how does Festo use digitalization uh, within these applications? Okay, then we have to go to the next slide. Yeah. Here uh, we try to summarize uh, the applications, the main automation applications in interlogistics that we are uh, serving with our components. Like, for example, sorting to separate goods and, pr uh, and products uh, uh, from a uh, production line to another one, uh, stopping and separation to uh, block and stop uh, the material flow um, and free it again. Uh, locate and buy uh, the biasing it means yeah to to position and to centralize uh, working piece uh, pallets for example on the line uh, lifting uh, transport goods and packages uh, uh, from uh, a level A to a level B uh, in the vertical uh, position and handling handling in the different and uh, the most different uh, uh, applications like for example uh, vacuum using suction process to manipulate products or gripping these products with different uh, grippers uh, or gripper functions and also uh, the infeeding of raw material in the lines that these are the main automation applications that we can serve with our pneumatics and electric automation components in the interlogistics sector. And these components, you can see here an overview. Uh, you see here a block, which is the pneumatics part with the valve terminals and uh, pneumatic cylinders. But here, the main part in the, in the, in the interlogistics machinery um, comes uh, from the electric automation. And Festo here, I would like to give you a first a very important message. Festo is very low in the pneumatics world, but we are also an uh, important player in the electric automation area with a complete program in the electric automation from electrical servo motors uh, through uh, 3D portals, so electric, ele electromechanical actuators, with the uh, uh, electrical drives in our and also our PLC program, so we can uh, equip and automate every kind of machines from the pneumatics to the electrical automation. And here, uh, I just would like to illustrate this corner here, which is, if I make a click here, I can uh, see it better. In this corner, you see uh, the corner related to digitalization. And here uh, we illustrate uh, the capabilities uh, we offer, we have and offer to our customers to collect the data from, from all this automation structure here, from all these automation components and automation levels to send this data in a, to a, a, a hardware that can be located in the machine or can be located in a server on the cloud process this data, analyze this data, and come up with results in terms of indication and information to the operator, what kind of anomalies, for example, is occurring in the machine or in the process right now, and what kind of uh, steps or tasks the operator can do in order to keep the machine of efficiency or to even uh, increase this machine efficiency. And this is what I'm going to show now. Yeah, digitalization. Yeah. Festo has bought a company three years or four years ago called Risotto. Risotto is a German company specialized in artificial intelligence solutions. It's a 100% uh, Festo company and with this know-how, we are uh, offering the artificial intelligence solutions for our customers. If we go ahead, we can uh, see the next slides. Uh, the offer uh, or the approach we have with artificial intelligence. You see here uh, these blue and gray uh, areas. So, and here also, if we talk about business intelligence, 
in terms of data processing. Business intelligence is the capability uh, uh, to analyze data come from a machine, from an application, and to analyze what has happened when a problem occurs. And then this gray area is the area related to the human work. So it means that some someone has to take this data and take decisions in order to plan an action. Uh, you can go further with these business intelligence tasks. You can uh, make diagnosis. So the business intelligence software can uh, suggest some diagnostic fun uh, uh, uh, tasks, but the final decision, uh, what uh, will be done, is taken by a human being. So, and if you consider this area here, we call it advanced analytics. With this advanced analytics approach, we develop or we have developed uh, software functions that can not only collect the data, but analyze this data in an intelligent way so that the software can propose to the human being a, an action. The decision, the fine decision is already taken by the human being, by the operator, but this operator gets from the software already uh, concrete suggestions in terms of predictive maintenance, for example, what component the, the operator should uh, replace in order to avoid a, a, a stop. And another thing that is possible, but this is um, an issue that uh, econ technology can do right now, we can do with our technology, but uh, it's quite um, uh, polemic because uh, here, we give the software and, and the system, the artificial intelligence, the possibility to analyze the, the, the data and also take the decision by itself without having any kind of interaction with a human being. Possibility is there, we can do it, but in most of the cases, uh, we people, we human beings, we, are not, we don't feel comfortable to give the the responsibility 100% to the artificial intelligence. So, and what kind of uh, uh, tasks and, uh, and, and actions we can do with our, an artificial intelligence uh, uh, solution? For example, I already mentioned predictive maintenance to anticipate eventual anomalies and problems, and predictive op optimization. It means to identify automatically uh, what can be done uh, in order to increase the machine efficiency. Our uh, artificial intelligence uh, package can do this and suggest uh, actions to improve and increase machine efficiency. And combining these capabilities, we can also use uh, uh, the artificial intelligence um, aspect and solution to make uh, a predictive <coughs> analysis of the quality of the quality of the good qualities that, that are coming out from the from the line. So I can the software or the artificial intelligence tool can identify uh, if there is room for improvement in terms of quality of the goods that are being produced. And last but not least, uh, since I have uh, an intelligence embedded in the machine now with an artificial intelligence solution, I can also manage energy in a very intelligent way. I can identify, for example, eventual uh, uh, decrease, decreases in the, in the production volume. And this artificial intelligence uh, solution can manage itself uh, the complete uh, factory. It can uh, turn machines off, for example, these machines are not being used right now in, in terms of uh, achieving a better and higher energy. Uh, so and this you can do also uh, automatically. So uh, we call this artificial intelligence uh, solution uh, from Festo, Festo AX. The X stays for automation experience. And Scraytech, powered by Scraytech. Scraytech uh, is one of the, the products of Resolve, is 100% Festo company. 
uh, that we have integrated in our artificial intelligence approach. So it means that using FastAX, FastAX, this uh, artificial intelligence package, you can uh, make your application, it can be a machine, it can be a whole factory, uh, more efficient, more intelligent, uh, starting with the assembly of the product, uh, then uh, FastAX collect data of the process and add adds intelligence to the project uh, process in terms of analyzing and suggesting eventual uh, actions in order to make the process or the factory more efficient. And doing this, you can imagine, you can have different factories in different uh, sites in the world. You can do this in a cloud-based uh, um, approach as well. It means that you process and analyze the data from different production sites in the cloud and communicate with people around the world that are responsible for the different processes in the different sites, uh, in the different machines, uh, in the different factories. So FastAX is a complete artificial intelligence uh, solution that gives you as machine builder or end user the possibility to manage your factories at the component level in an intelligent way in order to identify anomalies and prevent. So here you see some graphics. How does it work? So we each actually in our solution achieve the process in terms of uh, saying to the, to the artificial intelligence solution what is good what works well so here you you can have a graphic for example from from the consumption from the current consumption of servo motor and it can be six months let's say in this in these six months you you say to the artificial intelligence uh, uh, uh, module or solution or software that in these six months everything was if an anom anomaly uh, uh, happens, that, as you see here, these red points, these peaks, so the system knows that these peaks are not normal or are not, are not good. And in a, uh, with the use of different algorithms, the system can identify very fast in real time these peaks and these anomalies and generate alarms and inform uh, they're responsible for the process, for the machine, or for the factory. That's more or less how it works. So we don't say what is bad, we say what is good. And here, once again, uh, the process, uh, the analyzing process, the, the detection, the anomaly detection uh, happens. Then an alarm or alert is generated to a human being. If I click once again here, I just would like to illustrate that we have the human in the loop here so the final decision what has to be done is taken by the operator or someone that who is responsible for the machine with this uh, uh, output with this correction or with this prevention of a certain anomaly the artificial intelligence function can be updated so that it can be teached once again so that in the future the anomaly that has identified here uh, can be uh, easily identified. Or <clears throat> you know, that means that human should be always in loop together with artificial intelligence. Yeah, it, sh it shouldn't. But uh, uh, for us, it's important to keep the human being in the loop. Because, um, as I mentioned already, um, we people, not faster, but we uh, human beings, I don't, I don't know how do you feel to drive uh, a, a car uh, that uh, has, ha, has no driver. You just sit there and, ha and you have to, to, to, to, to, to have confidence that the car will take all the decisions. I don't feel comfortable. I, at least I, I would like to sit at the driver's seat and put my hands on the wheel. Even if I know that the car drives uh, uh, 
uh, or, or finds the direction for itself. It's more or less uh, the same here in the industrial automation. The possibility is there. We can give the artificial intelligence the possibility to take all the decisions. But uh, we propose actually uh, this first step to keep the human being in the loop so that the operator or the human being can take the final decision. It's a matter uh, how comfortable or how confident the, our customer feels in this matter. We can do both. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. And here, once again, we have an example of uh, uh, uh, uh, electro, elect, electromechanical access that we have monitored one, uh, one year. So you see here, this graphic is a result of one year um, uh, monitoring um, with a vibration sensor. So we have measured the vibration in electrical axis here for one year. That's the result you see here. You see here almost one or two thirds, uh, yeah, not, not two thirds, but more than a half of the year, this uh, axis worked very good. The vibration was uh, normal, uh, no problem. But in the last third here, the last 40% more or less, you see some red peaks here. So these were peaks where the vibration uh, was too strong. And this information from one year, we have feed it in the in artificial intelligence uh, solution, so that the machine learned that in this period here, in the, in the first half of the year, everything was okay. There was no anomaly. But in the second half of the year, the software uh, was teached uh, in a way that it could hit by these red peaks here. And these red peaks were, were as mentioned, uh, two strong vibrations in the axis. And these were the signals to the artificial intelligence solution for Festo by X to generate alerts and alarms um, for the operator. In this case, we didn't automate the solution. We just would like to see uh, how it would end. And after here, without having any kind of correction, <laughs> this was broken. So, and then in the next year, we used uh, the same algorithm with the same information in the new axis, and then the first AEX has identified once again this vibration and has informed the operator so that the operator could check uh, what was going on in the axis and could change or replace mechanical components that were not okay and caused this uh, strong vibration. That is a, a best example, a quick example, how the algorithm or the algorithms uh, work, so we have not only one, but more than 15, uh, in order to identify anomalies and inform uh, responsible operators uh, of the machine. Okay, okay Mino, uh, we have a limited time. Uh, I think we should speed up a little bit. Uh, now, my last question to you is, um, could you please give some uh, examples from the real application for us? Yes, if you go ahead here in the slides, yeah, you can jump. Yeah, this one is an interesting one. Unfortunately, I cannot give any name. It's a customer in the supply chain area. Uh, this picture illustrates more or less the application. It's uh, automated, uh, automated uh, magazine. Automated stock of the uh, uh, system in which uh, we are using, uh, we are preparing our fast OEX artificial intelligence suite to analyze the behavior of all servo motors or electrical motors installed in, in this system. And these electrical motors are all non festo are all third party motors. I will not uh, mention the name, but it's uh, another company, the 
We don't have any faster component components here in this solution. We just use FastAX, our artificial intelligence suite, to monitor uh, these servo motors. The PLCs installed in the application are non fasto also from a third party, different uh, brand uh, as um, of uh, from the servo motors. It means we have servo motors, electrical motors from a, a brand A, and the PLC is from a brand B. And this brand A and brand B, brand B have nothing to do with Festo. So we are analyzing, the idea is to analyze, collect data from uh, the servo motors in order to identify anomalies and prevent stops in the system. So that the operators can anticipate problems, anomalies in the motors and replace them before they they they, grow, they break. That's the, the idea. And it's a, a German customer uh, uh, who who is uh, supplying solutions for the pharmaceutical industry. Okay, oh. I think we have one another example, I guess. Yes, this is an example. Also, uh, unfortunately, I cannot mention any name, but it's in the semiconductor industry uh, where we are monitoring the process inside of the machine. This machine cuts wafer in the semiconductor uh, conductor industry. And the wafer cutting process is a very precise one. It must be perfect. Otherwise, the, the wafer cannot be used uh, uh, to produce chips uh, or electronic chips. So the cutting process in the wafer industry is uh, the heart of everything. So we have uh, used our FASTAEX artificial intelligence suite to monitor the cutting process in the machine so that we could identify deviations automatically and inform the operators uh, with anticipation uh, if eventual anomalies or problems uh, occur. So that uh, we have um, identified uh, that uh, poor quality uh, uh, process inside of the machine can lead uh, to a very big amount uh, of loss. So the customer had, has uh, many machines like this here in his factory, and if this uh, wave, waiver cutting process uh, has a poor quality, it can lead to a 10,000 euros per machine per month uh, uh, loss uh, in terms uh, of poor quality. It means that faster yields is helping the customer here to anticipate eventual uh, <laughs> problems in the cutting process so that the, the customer can save per month 10,000 euros per machine. The customer has in just one factory more than 30 machines here. Like this one. Just to give an idea of what artificial intelligence can do also in terms of preventing quality problems. And that is real big money as you see yes thank you for the examples uh, we have four minutes left and this is our last last slide uh, i want to ask the audience whether there is questions for you if not maybe we can continue with the last slide slide is there any question soru soru alabiliyor muyuz bilmiyorum ama sorusu olan varsa yanıtlamaya çalışabiliriz bir sorumuz var. Festo yeah. can be used in sorting sieves and applications and experience yet. Yes, it can be used uh, uh, everywhere. So there is not a specific solution for uh, interlogistic applications. It's uh, a Festo uh, artificial intelligence approach for the industry. So the, you can use in every kind of application. But the only thing is that we have to discuss together how is uh, the application where are uh, the main uh, um, or, or, or the, the fragile points of the application where we should focus uh, what we have to monitor and then we develop we develop together with the customer an approach dedicated for the application but the technology itself it's uh, it can be used uh, in the whole industry 
And yes, we have, as mentioned, we have already experiences in the intralogistic sector with some uh, machine builders and also end customers in big end customers in the intralogistic sector that are also uh, using artificial intelligence to prevent failures and stops in their in their um, uh, systems. Okay, thank you for the answer. Another question, maybe. Başka soru var mı izleyicilerimizden? Evet, şu an için başka sorumuz yok. You know, there is no other questions from the audience. Uh, last last two minutes. Would you like to summarize and close the conference? Okay, thank you. Uh, so this this last slide is a, a summary of what I've, I have uh, told you uh, until now. I just would like to point out that uh, this artificial intelligence uh, uh, offer fast IX, AX program can be used uh, in different ways. We call it on-premises. On-premises means um, uh, the function is installed in the machine. It can be also a function in the PLC, uh, or it's installed in the factory. It can be also on edge, on edges in the component. We can put uh, industrial PC inside of the machine, inside of the application, inside of the process that you want to monitor, and that that's what we call on edge. And it can be also central, uh, uh, uh, centrally done in the cloud. If you have different sites, different machines, different factories in different countries, in different regions, you can put all this data together in a cloud-based application so that the cloud uh, application gives you uh, for the uh, specific sites the uh, information regarding uh, the performance of each machine, of each component. And another very important uh, issue that I would like to point out, I already mentioned it, for us, it's important to keep the human in the loop principle. So we have the possibility to, to make you an, an autonomous solution, but uh, we suggest to keep the human in the loop so that at the end, a human being can take the final decision. And the third and last aspect that uh, is very important for us is that the data that the solution collects, it's your data. The data belongs not to festival, it belongs to the customer, it belongs to the machine builder, it belongs to the end customer. We don't use the data uh, to, uh, uh, we don't uh, register any data uh, without having the permission authorization uh, of the customer. We use the data generated by the machine only to take decisions or to inform the customer which decisions, which, which actions uh, are to the, the data. But the data it belongs to you. It's your data. That's the, my final point, uh, uh, uh, point that we like to illustrate. Okay, Mino, thank you very much for the uh, valuable presentation and the valuable information you provided for us. Uh, our time is up. Uh, thank you again for your participation. E, katılımcılara da çok teşekkür ediyoruz. E, umarım e, konuyla ilgili faydalı bilgiler size iletebilmişizdir. Herkese iyi günler diliyorum. Teşekkür ediyorum. Teşekkür Thank you. Ederim. Mina, bye bye. Thank you guys. Thank you. Tolga Bey, e, belki sorusu olan ya da sizinle iletişime geçmek isteyen izleyicilerimiz olursa dijital standınızdan ulaşabilirler değil mi? Tolga Bey. Tolga Bey beni duyabiliyor mu? Tolga Bey duyabiliyor musunuz? Evet. Sengülerim duyabiliyorum. Sandığınızdan izleyicilerimiz size ulaşabilirler değil mi? Sorusu olan, iletişime geçmek isteyen olursa. E, tam anlayamadım. Nereden ulaşabilirler mi dediniz? Dijital bir standınız var. Festo'nun dijital standı Doğru. var. Oradan da iletişime Doğru. geçebilirler değil mi? Elbette. Orada e, görevli arkadaşlarımız da şu anda e, canlı olarak bağlılar. Oradan her türlü soruya e, yardımcı olabiliriz. Tamam. Bunu da hatırlatmış olalım. Çok teşekkürler. Thank you very much Mr. Lopez. 
thank you so much, people. Thank you for the attention. I wish you all the best at the end of this complicated year. I thank you so much for the opportunity, for the time, and also for the interest. So God bless you and have a nice end of this year. Thank you. Thank you. Sevgili izleyicilerimiz, sizleri saat 11.45'teki tüm değer zincirinizi dijitalleştiriyoruz konulu panelimize davet ediyorum.